Now friends, before we move ahead and start configuring our systems for HDR, we need to understand the HDR system requirements. So here is a list of some, some of the requirements that uh, must be fulfilled uh, for both the primary and the standby database servers uh, to fulfill the requirements for HDR. Now the primary and the standby database must have the same DB2 major version. For example, you can have DB2 8 on both the primary and standby, you can have DB2 9 on both the primary and standby, or you can have DB2 10, 11, and so on. You cannot have DB2 9 and DB2 10 in combination for primary and standbys. Further, it says that the standby database fix pack level must be the same or higher than that of the primary database servers. But this is a major requirement here. Uh, ideal situation would be to keep the database fix pack level same for primary and standby databases. But if you have a higher fix pack level for the standby, then it is fine. But you cannot have a higher fix pack level on the primary and a lower one on the standby. So that is the situation here. Then the primary and the standby must have the same platform. So we have both these machines. So we will install an operating system. Uh, both these machines will have its own operating system. So it says that both the operating systems should be same and uh, the machine architecture should be same. So here is a list of all these distinct platforms. So we can have both these machines as Windows operating system with the same machine architecture, but we cannot have a Windows machine uh, paired with a Linux machine for HDR. Then we talk about the DB2 bitness level. So DB2 comes for 32-bit operating system. It comes for 64-bit operating systems. So whatever bit size you choose should be the same for both primary and standby. Then the primary and standby must have the same paths for table space containers to support table space replication. So when you install DB2, you get to see uh, the folder that is created on a C drive, that is the instance folder. When we go inside that, we find the node 0000 uh, directory, then inside that we have the database uh, directories with their names and the table spaces, etc. So all of that directory hierarchy should be same on the primary and the standby. So if you're installing DB2 uh, on the C drive on Windows platform, so it should be on the C drive in the same location uh, on the standby server as well. Then the same hardware is also recommended on the primary and standby so that the standby has enough power for replay. You can have a lower uh, powerful standby machine because that will only be used when a switchover happens from the primary to the secondary database server but you should test and do a sufficient planning uh, when deploying a less powerful standby because it is quite possible that the standby may not be able to take up the load of the primary. And so for that reason, uh, it's recommended that we have the same amount of CPU, memory, disk space, etc. on both these machines. Then the same amount of memory is recommended on the primary and standby, so the buffer pool replication is less likely to fail. All in all, uh, what I can see over here from the system requirements is that both these machines uh, should be almost identical and uh, should differ in configuration as less as possible. So that's it for the system requirements, friends. Thank you.